Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the products that I use in my bathroom. I'm going to be giving you a full bathroom tour of the low toxin options that I've currently picked up and am using, and just a little bit of the ways around some of the toxins that are put in our beauty products and just ways to make our lives healthier and happier. So the reason why I chose this lifestyle and why I feel like everyone should be more concerned Concerned about it is because the fact that there aren't really there aren't really that many regulations on the products that we use so a lot of the products that are on the market are filled with chemicals that are carcinogenic or are endocrine disruptors so they mimic estrogen and this can lead to hormonal imbalances so this is why it's really important to get all this crud out of your bathroom because if you're constantly reapplying this stuff day after day, it's going to add up and it's going to have a detrimental effect on your health. So definitely taking this stuff seriously is a great idea. So let's get started. So first we're going to start out with my side of the bathroom. Um, I do apologize in advance for any shakiness that might be going on. I don't have a camera stabilizer on hand uh, and I'm also using my cell phone. So that is going to play a role in it, but I hope it doesn't interfere with the video too much. So without further ado, this is the toothbrush that I will use occasionally. It's just a little wooden one and I feel like they work okay, but this brand Preserve works a lot better. I like the angle of the toothbrush. I feel like it cleans the teeth much more effectively. I know it's plastic and that's something that I'm trying to find a replacement for. Uh, I feel like the wooden ones are just really abrasive on the bristles and the gums. And also if I feel like I need a bit of a deeper clean, I have a, an electric toothbrush and that has been very helpful. I also have some coconut oil for um, like a moisturizer on my skin or if I want an oil pull to help my teeth and my oral health, I do that. I also have a wooden boar bristle brush and then just a regular bamboo brush. I had a wet brush, um, but as you can see, it's it's kind of tossed to the back because I really don't use it anymore. I feel like these are really helpful to keep my hair nice and shiny because I only wash my hair every two to four days. So these have been really excellent with helping me maintain good hair health. For this, this is literally just castor, um, excuse me, not castor oil. This is um, Castile soap and water and it's Dr. Bronner's unscented. It works really well and I have no complaints about it. Here is my beauty section. <laughs> this is Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum. I'm trying to fade my acne scars and just have a better complexion, I guess, if you can say that. Um, so that's really been helpful. I've only been using this for about a month and I haven't really noticed too many results. So maybe I can add niacinamide into my routine. I don't know, I'm just kind of going with it. This is the unrefined shea butter that I use. It comes in this really crummy looking packaging. I'm almost towards the end of it. It's not really pretty packaging, but it works really well and I've had a lot of success. Uh, I've used this for a couple years for my skin and my face and it doesn't break me out and it leaves my skin super soft. This is a homemade deodorant that I have made. Um, as you can tell, I'm very low, <laughs> but um, this is what has really worked for me. Uh, a lot of the other ones that I have used in the past are just kind of gross. Like they make you, they leave you sweating and you smell and it's just not a fun experience. So I find it's just best if I continue to make my own and it's worked really, really well for me. This is just a lip balm. I think it's made out of like shea butter and coconut oil and something else maybe beeswax i don't know this was given to me and i really like it i wish i could find the recipe for it because it's not made with like uh, mineral oil or petroleum jelly and that's really important to me because um yeah i don't want any of that stuff on my body i do have little cotton swabs here just regular q-tips to clean my ears these are actually homemade beeswax candles i'm not exactly sure about the 
the wick. I'm not sure if that's like unbleached cotton, but me and my mom actually make these and it's a lot of fun. The reason why I make my own candles is because of the fact that um, the candles that you buy at the store are filled with a lot of carcinogenic chemicals. Uh, especially if you're buying regular paraffin candles, which I can almost guarantee you, you probably are. And these release, uh, really, not these, but the ones in the store release a lot of toxic fumes, like uh, equivalent to like diesel fuel. So when you're burning that in your house, you are burning basically petroleum into your air and then the fragrance that you're burning too. So that's why I always recommend beeswax. And if you don't wanna do beeswax, you can do like an organic soy candle, definitely organic because soy is an incredibly heavily sprayed crop with pesticides. So that's really important to make sure that you stick with that as well. Here is um, my husband's side. We just have a little water pick machine. This thing has been awesome at improving oral health. I highly recommend that. Um, I'm really, really big about oral health, of course, um, because you know your whole digestive system, like it's mouth to rectum. So if you're not taking care of your oral hygiene and you have mercury fillings and cavities and abscesses and infections, like of course you're not gonna feel well. So that's why I always recommend that, you know, you take really good care of your teeth. You only have one set of them, and once you start letting them go, that's really it. And now as far as the drawers, excuse the mess, like I said, this is raw and unfiltered. We have, I haven't cut these tubes open, but I, we basically just use Dr. Bronner's Spearmint All-in-One Toothpaste because I feel like this is probably one of the best ones that I've found. It does not irritate my gums. As far as floss, we get Tom's anti-plaque floss because a lot of the other flosses are coated with PTFE or the Teflon coating that I've talked about in previous videos, which is really toxic to your health. And if you're putting that in between your teeth every single day over and over, you are releasing a lot of chemicals into your mouth that you don't want there. So. Uh, I think that this is coated with some kind of natural wax. I don't have the ingredients on hand, but this is definitely an excellent option. This thing, this thing. Let me tell you about this thing. <laughs> so this is a flosser. It's a dental flosser where you can thread the floss in between here. So instead of buying those little crummy reusable ones to floss your teeth, you literally just put the floss in between here and then you're able to floss your own teeth because I don't know if there's like something wrong with me, but I've tried to floss without these with just using, you know, threading it between my fingers and I cannot do it for the life of me. And I know I won't floss if I do that. So this thing has been really helpful, highly recommend it. And then the second drawer here, this is my drawer. It is filled with all the goodies. <laughs> so first I have, you know, just general stuff. Um, here's my Diva cup that I use. I've wanted to try, uh, what's that other thing? Like the period panties and the um, reusable pads. I just haven't gotten around to buying them yet. These are really convenient. I don't like to spend a bunch of money every month. So I'm always gonna go for a reusable option. I just. I hate creating extra waste. So I recommend this if you are able to use it, I recommend it. I know some women have trouble with it, so you know, that's that. But if you don't, use it, it's great. And then as far as makeup, I really don't do anything for makeup. I have this, it is just some kind of liquid eyeliner. I didn't really research too much into it, but I looked at the ingredients and it didn't seem horrible, but it also doesn't seem like super great. But I don't wear makeup very much, maybe once every two weeks. So I'll look into it, see how good it is. And that's really it for the makeup. Honestly, I don't wear anything else. So super simple. This is a gua sha, if I'm saying that correctly, which I'm probably not. So it just helps with lymphatic drainage. You can use this um, on your face, on your body with some oils, and it just helps move extra lymph and just helps your face look a lot less puffy. And it's overall really an effective tool. This is another tool that I have for lymph. It's just a dry brush. I don't like these little nubbies in here. I think it kind of ruins the experience. So I'm going to pick up another one eventually that does not have that, but this feels really good on your skin. And uh, yeah, 
definitely go and pick one up when you're out in town. This is the eye drops that I use. Uh, some of the other eye drops contain some questionable ingredients and this is a good brand. Um, I like them for a number of reasons, uh, mostly because they're homeopathic and uh, I feel like they really hydrate my eyes when I need it. So definitely recommend that. I have my little bowl of um, essential oils. These are really helpful for many different things. I like the Young Living brand just because of the fact that they have a uh, good reputation for not using any harsh chemicals in it, nothing, no bad junk in here. So they are a little bit more expensive, but it is so worth it. And then I'll show you that in a second. That is my razor. And then as far as a bathtub, I have quite a large bathtub, thankfully, and I have Epsom salt. So I get this from Sam's Club. It's really helpful for getting your magnesium levels up and also soaking after a long day after the gym. And now all the stuff that I use in the shower, it's really not a whole lot. I try to keep it nice and simple. So currently I'm using this stuff and I'm not going to lie, I hate it. It smells really bad and it, um, I don't know, it's just gross. It smells really chemically, um, but it was all that was at the store at the time and I had to pick something. So I picked this, but normally I'll use like a native. Uh, conditioner and shampoo and I feel like that works a lot better so if you have the option to pick up native uh, definitely go do that this is just a bunch of old bars of soap clearly but it is good soap I picked this up at Whole Foods and uh, it smells good and I'm not exactly sure about the ingredients I'm not gonna lie but um, it seems like it's pretty clean and I like that they don't use any kind of packaging this is just a homemade shampoo and conditioner that I've made. So it's literally just baking soda and water. And this is apple cider vinegar and water. And it didn't work too well for my hair. So I kind of just stopped. This is what I use on my face to wash my face. I just do honey and that's it. So nice and simple. Here is the razor. I'm actually kind of scared of this thing because every time I shave, I end up accidentally slicing myself and that's no fun. So I've just been using an electric razor and then this occasionally afterwards, but I like it. It's really well made. And if you have the guts to use this, definitely do it. No, it's not too bad. I'm just being a baby and I'm being impatient when I shave. Now, as far as your shower head. This is something that's also gonna play a factor into what you need for your bathroom because we live on well water and we're on top of an aquifer. So I'm honestly not concerned about the chemicals that are coming out of here for showering. I still filter all of my drinking water, but as far as showering goes, I don't filter it. But um, if you have like, um, like chlorine or city water, definitely go pick up a shower head with a filter in it because you don't want all of those chemicals on your skin. And like I said, I'm keeping it real, I'm keeping it raw. So this is also an enema kit that I have. It is stainless steel and it has a silicone hose with it that is really helpful. So you can do like coffee enemas with this or even just regular um, like salt water enemas you know you put a teeny bit of salt in all the water and this is really helpful for a lot of different things they've used enemas for all kinds of different healing modalities and just for helping their patients um, assist with different conditions so if you don't have a good enema kit i recommend that you go out and get one this is more of the miscellaneous stuff. I use this as a dry shampoo. Oh my God, baby powder. No, it's not baby powder. I emptied it out, I washed it, and I put cornstarch in here. So this is an excellent way to use dry shampoo in between your washes and just comb it through your hair. And it works incredibly well at um, getting rid of some of the grease in your hair and to just make you feel a little bit cleaner after some of those days of not washing your hair. This is also another toothpaste that I'll use. I'm kind of running out of this right now, um, but this is a really excellent option. It makes your teeth feel really clean without all the fluoride and junk. This is a sunscreen that I use. 
and this is really excellent because it's a mineral oil sunscreen so it doesn't have any of those harsh nasty chemicals in there and i think that the main oil that they use is coconut let's see yep it's coconut so it's not a bunch of vegetable oils and all kinds of other stuff i mean i do see sunflower oil on the list but it's super far down there compared to the coconut oil they do have a one they have one for the face and that one works really well and it's not in the bathroom right now but um yeah i definitely recommend derma e and then just miscellaneous stuff rubbing alcohol hydrogen peroxide really excellent all around you know disinfectants and stuff and then there's bentonite clay i use this for um, like a face mask if i have um, if i just want to get my skin really clear i'll mix this with like maybe some honey and yogurt and it seems to work really well so i definitely like bentonite clay and then i've talked about castor oil in the past castor oil is really really great for so many different things um, like i said i have videos on this and i definitely recommend castor oil if you have not tried it already now this is cleaners. So this is also another really important part of your bathroom being low toxin because of the fact that if you're spraying your bathroom with a bunch of toxic, harsh chemicals, that kind of defeats the purpose of all of the rest of the stuff that you see. So this is one of my favorites. It is Young Living Thebes. I feel like this one has really done a number on getting the bathroom clean. It makes the bathroom smell great and it's very low toxin. There's very, I don't think there's any bad ingredients in here really. So you just put it in the spray bottle. All you really need is a cap full and then you fill the rest up with water and you shake it. So, I mean, it really does pay for itself and I really like it a lot. As far as cleaning the mirrors, uh, this is really great. It's just a spray bottle filled with half vinegar and half water, and you just wipe it down. Super easy, no Windex needed. And then as far as the more stuck on stuff, so if there's like grime in the bathtub or the shower, I will use Sal Suds, a biodegradable cleaner. This one has really worked um, really well, and I, it doesn't really require much scrubbing unless it's like really stuck on. And then you can use this one for the hand soap. I've always enjoyed it. This is the peppermint one. And baking soda is also another staple in the bathroom for cleaning because of the fact that if there is something that's stuck on, like if uh, there's a bunch of dirt in the, if there's a bunch of dirt in the shower you can just literally sprinkle this on there and it takes a little bit of elbow grease to scrub it out but it definitely works and also something worth mentioning is the fact that these bulbs are all incandescent bulbs so if you look at the wavelength between led light bulbs and incandescent is leds are really high in blue light which can interfere with your circadian rhythm and how well uh, and how good of a quality sleep that you're getting. So I always choose incandescent. I know that they don't last as long and they consume a little bit more energy than the LEDs, but I definitely have noticed a difference since I stopped using LEDs, especially in the nighttime. And uh, yeah, overall they've just worked really well for me. So yeah, that's something I felt like I should mention as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you found all of this information helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, click that subscribe button as well. So yeah, it's really important to make sure that you have non-toxic or low toxin options all throughout your home. And I know it can feel really overwhelming because you know, when I first started my journey, I was looking around and thinking, oh my God, I have so much stuff that's full of all these harsh toxins. Where am I gonna start? But honestly, the best place to start is just use up the products that you currently have. And when it runs out, go and swap it with a healthy one. And also in order to find healthy products, you can go to ewg.org or even download the Think Dirty app. Those are really great places to start. They are full of excellent resources to help you navigate through the confusing world of greenwashing and all of the horrible marketing tactics that these companies that um, claim to be green but are actually not use. So yeah, definitely go do that and good luck on your journey. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.